Plus Onion, is it true that Ryan Johnson modelled Benoit Blanc's swimwear on your own wardrobe? Because that is, that's true. <laughs> because that's true. I'm watching this, and I was like, I don't tend to wear our swimwear. I just tend to dress like that when I go to the shops. <laughs> if anyone hasn't watched it, they've dressed up Daniel Craig in some of the uh, craziest beach wear that you could ever get. So, glass onion, uh, knives out. Glass a- onion and, and yeah, glass onion colon and knives out mystery, given it its full title. And famed Southern detective Benoit Blanc travels to Greece for his latest case which is a very brief synopsis that is. Oh, that just tells you that Benoit Blanc is in it again, and this time it's set in Greece. But nothing there in the plot synopsis about it. Got a stellar cast, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, got... or has it? Is it stellar? I don't know. Daniel Craig, Edward Norton, is he an A-lister? Not really. I think he's Kate done his time. Nah. Yeah, well, they're all, they're all class. I mean, yeah, Daniel, Daniel Batista, Craig can... Catherine Hahn. I don't really know who Leslie Odom Jr. is. Chanel Monet. Uh, faces for Billy wasn't sure. Jessica Henwick, she yeah, turns up in loads of stuff. Yeah, she's really good as well. I mean, I, I know her from um, Bugs from The Matrix. No, I think the cast is perfectly good. Uh, I There's something about Knives Out which I really, really like. Again, do all of these Benoit Blanc things need a big cast? I mean, you know, it's modern day Agatha Christie type thing, isn't it? So is it dependent on that sort of big cast to, or, or large roster of characters? I think, uh, I think they've done it. I think we, we're doing the two films now. This is a kind of formula. And again, it's not like it's a new formula, is it? Like you say, it's the Agatha Christie exactly. you know, famous film and TV adaptations where they have they have a lot of well-known at the time faces. They, you know, there was one was on TV the other day and it was a bit weird because there's people on there that I thought, oh, yeah, I remember you. I have yeah. to you. And uh, that that's a bit of a formula now, isn't it? I guess it's going to have Benoit Blanc in it. It's going to have a large cast, which you've got to have for a murder mystery, because otherwise, you know, yeah, it's <laughs> where's two, the mystery? It's two people, of... yeah. And I think we'll just have a you know mixture of up and coming and familiar faces, and I think that, that I think that's the only thing's cha- changing. Uh, so, sorry, not changing. Sorry, man. without spoilers, because so. uh, in case it's still fairly new, so perhaps not everyone's watched it yet. Did you like the film? Do you like to try and guess who it is in these? I watched it with my wife and son at uh, Christmas Eve, actually. And yes, we were trying to, oh, no, it's him because of this, or it's her because of that, or whatever, whatever. I quite enjoy the kind of guess along with it. See, I, I, I think the first one, I think Knives Out had that. And then yeah, it's, it's interesting seeing when it comes out, well, what actually happened. With this, it's kind of structured slightly different, isn't it? Because it turns up and there's no one, there's not, it's a murder mystery, but there's no one murdered at the start. Yeah. And then it becomes a case of like, oh, he's been invited to a sort of murder mystery weekend. So he's just playing along. Oh, okay. So it's going to be that instead. Yeah. But then it isn't. Then the plot almost seems to be about um, him predicting who's going to murder somebody. Yep. But then it doesn't really become about that. And somebody does get, eventually get murdered. Or and, do they? And, and then, they're solving that. So yeah, you, I don't think you, I don't think you can play along with this at all. There's far too much that's not shared with the audience. And there's a whole lot of flashback, isn't there? Would, would you agree? Sort of like three quarters of the film is kind of set up, and then you get a, a really good, I don't know, half an hour, forty minutes of yeah. Of I mean, the good, having... the good thing with that is, I mean, the way it's structured, where it sort of sort of reveals a lot of extra information which you didn't have. I'm kind of looking forward to watching this a second time with all that extra information. The first yeah. half of the film, there's so much information that's not shared with you until halfway through the film. You can't play along with this, surely. You can't. Well, I, I think I think we did, kind of. What I will say is, yet again, and this, again, I've watched Knives Out twice, so I may have watched it a third time. Again, these all depend on a fairly unlikable bunch of characters, don't they, as well? You know, mo- most people have got these kind of they're a bit greedy or a bit selfish or they're just generally a bit horrible or or they've got something to hide i, yeah. I, I watched a thing uh, sorry i tell like i listened to a podcast and they were saying about right at the start of the film where they're going to get on this boat to go over to the greek greek island they're all wearing masks because it's set during covid and he said yeah. the way these characters act with their masks tells you all you need to know about their characters yes, the, and I thought it was yeah, quite the, good yeah yeah the scientist has got a sort of 
the best, super, most suitable mask for you know, yep. keeping toxins out of your mouth. And then yeah, like the Kate Hudson one, where she's a she's a celebrity movie star, and then she's she's wearing one that wouldn't actually stop anything at all. Which she's just wearing it like, well, I'm wearing a mask, aren't I? Yeah, I remember it, that. I remember during COVID, there's pictures of people doing that. So oh it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting because it's first time I've really seen that in anything in a film where it's acknowledged COVID. I mean, there's been films made during COVID time, but they don't, they don't acknowledge it where that does. And then obviously they'll get like a little squirt from somebody like it. It's Ethan Hawke, isn't it? A magic. Yes, it was. It was like a magic yeah, fix, wasn't it? Yeah. So what did I've... you think of the <laughs> uh, cut for Chinese audiences, the the gay subtext, gay and you'll miss it <laughs> scene with Benoit Blanc now? Um, I, I I don't think that's too. I don't think that's jarring in that sense. I think it's because my daughter just uh, <laughs> she's. she's she didn't pick up on it, and she thought that maybe Benoit Blanc was like this super famous rich detective, and the guy that answers the door is his butler, yeah, as yeah. opposed to his partner. Yeah, well, that's, that's saying it is in case someone hasn't seen it. But I, I assumed after the first one he was. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know if there's any signals there in the in the first one. So I kind of assumed he was anyway. Because I, I always, I always, get, always get this where it's that kind of across Twitter and like, oh, Benoit Blanc is the first gay detective. But actually in the film, it's it's as blink and you'll miss it. And you think, why? why? Like, I know it's all clickbait, so you know, it's all of that, isn't it? But it's yeah, kind of like, it's a, and again, it's filmed it's in thing. such a way they can cut it without any needs. But but overall, Rob, what did you, how, did you like the film? Was it good? Did it keep it Yeah. I like uh, judging as in, you know, so it's context of like a murder mystery. I, I'm not big on the whole Agatha Christie murder mystery thing. You know, I, I'm not, in, yeah. I'm not really into that at all. But I, I liked Knives Out because it was, it was clever, it was funny. Uh, yeah, despicable characters that you can't. I mean, the idea that they're all got to be potential murderers, haven't they? So they've got to all going to be unlikable somehow. If they're likable, then you're not going to buy them as potential murderers. Yeah. Uh, as the sequel, I think it's really clever what he's done with, the, like I say, this layered s- structure. So it's not just he's a murder, he's got to solve it. There's yeah. a lot more going on. It's really cleverly structured. Love the way they've taken the setting. Uh, so you've got this sort of, um, you know, very green, foresty and town settings in the first one, haven't you? You've got the big old build, the big old mansion house, yeah. all dark woods, um, dark brown wood sort of colours. And then they've just done the opposite and just gone, right, I'm going to have it on a little Greek island all blazing. Bright colours, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. And sand and stuff like that. So that idea is really clever. So, you know, the next one, what's it going to be? Like deep snow or something. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it. Yes. I really enjoyed it. I thought there were lots of... What well, lot lots of sort of stereotypical figures we dislike in there or win that character. So, you know, your, your Edward Norton is your Elon Musk, your uh, mm. Kate... What's her name? Uh, Kate... Uh, Hudson, Hudson. Hudson, she's that kind of you know uh, non-mask wearing celebrity that you kind of grit your teeth at. Uh, what I did like is quite a few instances of of uh, Benoit Blanc being he's super intelligent and it kind of comes out, doesn't it? Uh, almost like a throwaway comment at the start when he's having a chat with Edward Norton because there's this really detailed puzzle in there that they get through the post to invite them to this thing, and he yeah. says, "Oh, I got this box with a very simple kids puzzle in there." And I was like, "All right," because you see the other characters kind of working to get to get to the end of the the, the clues, whereas he obviously gets he, it straight away, doesn't he? he? But he did he solve it though? Well, that's that's for that's for spoilers, isn't it? If you think about it, <laughs> did he even have it? <laughs> well, yeah, because I yeah, watched the, the only thing that let it the, the only thing that let it down for me, I I think uh, a lot of this relies on the uh, charisma and charm and the playing off each other of the cast. Yeah. I do think the first one has a better cast. Yes, I'll agree with that. And I think that's where the first one pips the post on this. And the other thing with the first one, I've probably seen it about three or four times whenever it's on TV and I end up sort of, you know, watching little bits of it. And I think when it came out, watched it, then watched it with someone else, then in-laws came around and we thought it's really good, you'll like this, we watched it again. And it kind of stands up to repeated viewings. I think so. At the minute, I don't know with Glass Onion until I watch it a second time. I don't know what, but uh, as, a, as a new franchise, uh, it's great. Yeah, I'm yeah, really looking I'll, forward to another one. So, same here. I, I really enjoyed it. It was actually for the first time for a while. I, I'd seen it advertised coming up on Netflix and I was like, oh yeah, right, got to watch it. And we actually made time to watch it. 
the, I think it was the day it came out. Was it Christmas Eve it came out? So that was mm. quite nice because of the pedigree of the first. But yeah, really good. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, is it better than the first one? No, I don't think it is. No, but is is this like a really promising start to a new franchise? Then yes. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Good. How yes. many... Um, <laughs> How many Benoit Blanc cravats <laughs> do you want to get? Out of ten. Oh. Eight for me, I think. Yeah, I think so. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I enjoyed it. I, I did. Yeah. I did. I did enjoy it quite a lot. I think it was really good. Not, not as good as the first one, but still really, really good. But I'm, I'm open-minded that watching this a second time could actually you could end up admiring it more when yeah. you're not playing. You're not trying to play along with the game, and you see what's actually going. This the information that you know second time around when you rewatch it, you could actually admire this a lot more. And that eight could bump up to a nine, maybe. But it's certainly a solid eight at the moment. Do you know what I did like? Sorry, I know we just done our numbers, but what I did like, and I, and I know this is in every single probably in you know, a Poirot does it. What I really love in all these things that that get me, and it's when you see something. So, for example, you see someone being shot, for example. And then you get to see it again a bit later as the detective explains it. And you see it from a different angle or a different mm. point of view. I, I, I really like that. I like it when, when things do that. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a subscribe.